Man, how, ama how amazing it was to see these groups of kids up here um, who were grasping that idea that inside of them, within them, is God's spirit roaring like a lion. And I'm hoping, I, you know, they, they really inspired this, honestly. I was in uh, South Kids um, a couple weeks ago getting to spend some time. I think something else was going on in here, and I got to be in there. And, and it was fun. Of course, they do, um, Sarah and the team, they do a great job. And it was worship time. And uh, they, they just, you know, had them all in there front row. And then this song starts going on. And these kids are just, they're, they're going crazy to this song. And I was thinking, man, they, they, they get this. They get this. And I said, I want us to get this too. And they got it. They, and you should see, I mean, they're, they're, they're asking, like Jameson said, they're asking for it from their parents. Play it in the car. I heard someone tell me, Troy was telling me the other day that little Ian is very forceful about it. I mean, he, you, know, you better get the song on, Dad. I mean, if we're going to, you know, right out of school, I want to hear this song. And, and uh, my son as well sings it around the house. I think for some of you, uh, Jameson himself uh, heard this a couple weeks ago that said, hey, when are we going to sing that song again? Because, you know, that that song has a story in it that we all want. We, uh, we all want to know that, that God's spirit within us is ready to fight for us. And when we look at this, when we, when we come together for a day like today, I believe it's more than just, it's more than just Sunday ritual that we get together. It's more than just yearly tradition that we would get together for a time like this. I believe uh, Easter is about a celebration of the life that lives within us. And I think each one of us, each one of us as we sit and think about that, and we think we're hearing the lyrics, we're hearing the words, we're seeing the kids sing this, that that life, that promise of, of, of Christ's life within us can be overlooked on a daily basis. And we can see it today. We come here today, and, and, and Easter especially, we get, you know, we get dressed up and, and we sing in the great songs, and today it's here. But what about tomorrow? What about Tuesday? What about next week? Next month? And I believe that this life that we, that we have within us can be the most overlooked promise of Scripture. This past, past week, I, I really hope that you spent some moments reflecting on the final days of Jesus' life. You see it everywhere. You know, you go to Walmart, Easter, the greatest celebration, you're going to save more. You know, I mean, they, it's everywhere. It's, I mean, you see it everywhere. And so if you're around the church at all, or if you've thought about the church, or you thought about Easter, then there's just, that, there, there's just those moments about reflecting on the final days that Jesus had. And in those final days, he communed with his disciples. We read this in Scripture. He communed with his disciples. He, he spent time with them, preparing them and telling them this was what was going to happen. Some of them were like, no, we, this, this can't happen. And he says, it's to your advantage that it will. In those final days, what else did he do? He prayed in the garden. It says he prayed for the believers. He prayed for himself. He prayed for the disciples. He prayed for, for us. And in those final days, he, he was betrayed by a friend. And in those final days, he was beaten. He was spit on. He was laughed at. He was cursed at. And in those final days, he was killed in the worst way possible at the time. But as he told his disciples, if they want the reference in John 16, 7, as he's speaking to them about this, these final days, he uses a great phrase. And he says, it was too... It's to our advantage, it's to your advantage that this is going to happen. It's to your advantage that this is happening. Can you imagine hearing that? So why are we here today? Because we want to believe in the promise. The promise that his death was not final. When Christ died for us, for us all, it was more than just a good story. More than just a good story that we hear. When Christ died for us, it was more than just a yearly celebration. It was more than just songs that we sing. It was more than just Sunday attendance. His death was, and I believe is, about resurrection within us. His death is about his story coming alive within us. His death is about the daily celebration, the daily celebration of life that we have within us. 
And his death is about his song within us that sings every morning. And his death is about his attendance within us daily and not just on Sunday. His death was to our advantage because the promise of his power now lives within us. Imagine living your life daily with that understanding. That the promise of Christ's power now lives within us. A promise that I see, and I, I really do see, gets overlooked in the life of believers on a regular basis. This morning again, you've heard our little ones come up front proclaiming this to everybody. Looking you in the eyes. Telling you that this spirit, this God is not dead. He's surely alive and he's living on the inside. And he's roaring like a lion. Proclaiming to anybody who would listen. Our South Kids experience for, is just, uh, for, for me to describe it, it's, it's really hard because can you imagine that it's more than just you're just dropping your kids off? That they're actually from, from this age understanding this type, this type of, of idea about Christ. This type of idea about his spirit. That you can go daily to school. You can go daily to, to your homes. You can go daily to your families. And this is how you can live. And that happens at, at, at all ages down there. It's, it's so neat to hear kids saying, I want to hear it in the car. To hear my son singing it in the house. To hear adults coming to Jameson even and requesting it to be played. But why are they asking that? Why? Why are they keep saying it? Just because it's a good tune? Because it sounds good? Because this is the truth we want to hold on to. I believe this. That this truth that Christ living within us is when the grind of life comes down on us and when the stresses come down on us and when it just seems to be too much for us, we want the lion roaring within us. That's what we want. I know that's what I want. When we're up against it, young or old, it doesn't matter. We need the lion within us to roar. But doesn't at times, doesn't at times, depending on how our relationship is at the time with God, doesn't our lion take on a new, a, 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 a different picture at times? And, and now I'm just telling you, this isn't right. But this is how it is. And I've been there. And, 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 and I, I, I've been there where my lion just doesn't seem to be the lion that I want it to be, depending on how things are going. You know what I mean? And that's not, that's not what Scripture teaches us. But I, wanna, I just want to go over just a couple. These are some pictures just to help. If we haven't been to church in a while, or maybe we've been, you know, feeling ashamed, maybe we're feeling guilty, maybe we feel like, and we covered this last series, that we're just not doing enough. Isn't this our lion? Doesn't our lion kind of look like this? You know, it's like, oh, you know, it's a, it, I got a lion in there, but I'm just ashamed. I just don't know if I can make it today. You know, and I, I feel this way. It's, I just don't know if I'm going to get there. Or what about this one? Or maybe we are new to this whole thing. And I've seen this as, as a new church. I've seen this a number of times. Oh, I'm just new to this. I don't know much about it. I'm just really, I, really just, I don't know all this Bible stuff. I'm trying, you know, but is this what your lion may feel, you know, look like? You know, it's like, it's trying. It's growing inside. It, it's really doing its best, you know. That's not what we understand about Scripture, but that's how we feel at times. Or how about this lion? I've gotten this one a, a, a quite a bit. We struggle believing in a lion within us that would actually roar, that would actually fight, because we're more comfortable thinking about a very peaceful lion like this. You know, a lion like, oh, just hug all the animals. Everything's going to be okay and all this stuff. But let me just tell you, when we're up against it, this lion falls short for us and we feel like we're on our own. And we just don't know how to fight. As we move forward, friends, if you're here today, if you're here today to celebrate the resurrected Christ just as I am and the promises of his life, his power, his spirit living within us, then this is the lion that I picture within us. I picture this lion 
right here, the all-powerful, the untamable lion. When you are in a circumstance and you need the lion to be within you, this lion we're talking about roaring, this is the promise that you want to hold on to. If I told you today that the same power that raised Christ from the dead, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that can live inside you. Wouldn't you, aren't you blown away by that? Aren't you thinking, man, are you really the same thing? We just saw a clip of his, I mean, right there, the tomb is empty. We saw the holes in his hand. And you're telling me that the same power and the same spirit that raised that Christ from the dead can live within me? And I'm telling you, yes. If you believe that, listen to this. What obstacles could you overcome with that understanding? What relationship would be mended if you had that understanding? What purpose could be fulfilled within you? And what would that mean to your family dynamic if the same spirit and the same power that raised Christ from the dead was living in you? That's why we celebrate today. Now some of you are here you're saying, man, that sounds like a bunch, a bunch of pastor hype, man. Come on, I mean, really, I mean, is, really, is this, is this really happening? Let me tell you, John 14, 26, just to, just to, to help, because I needed help. I'm like, really? I've heard it before, but where is it at? Where is he talking about this? And this is Jesus talking about the same spirit that raised, his, that raised him from the dead. This is what this spirit will do, John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father, and we hear Holy Spirit, right? And we sometimes we think, ugh, Holy Spirit, what do you mean by, ooh, ghosty, what's, what What's happening right here? I mean, we get a little freaked out by that. You know, you know, we think we can say God sometimes. We can say Jesus. And then we're like, what's the other thing? Oh, spirit. Whoa, spirit. You know, it's like, what, what is that? And Jesus made it so clear. He says, it's the spirit. It's the helper for you. It's your helper. You ever been in class, young ones? I mean, you're, you're in your class and you just can't get it. You're just, you can't figure it out. And then maybe there's just like the helper in class. It might be a teacher. It might be a volunteer that's going around. And you just can't figure out the problem. You can't get it right. And then that person comes around. You, you're like, maybe I can get help right here. Raise your hand. And this helper comes over to you. And everything seems to be so much better. Things begin to be much clearer. And Jesus is saying about this Holy Spirit, he's saying the helper will come, the Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and he will bring to you, listen to this, he will bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. All the things that I've said to you. Last series we talked about this being a treasure like gold and silver. The words of Christ in here speaking to you. And Christ is saying that this same Holy Spirit will be something that will remind you. He will remind you of these things. In John 16, 13, Christ still talking about the Spirit. Listen to what he says. He says, however, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All the things that the Father are, are, has are mine. Therefore, I said that. He will take of mine and he will declare it to you. The same power that was with Jesus is the same power that can be within you. And you want to know why we come here and we celebrate. It's more than just about the, the empty tomb. We're like, wow, the tomb was empty one time. Let's get dressed up and let's celebrate. No, you know what? It's about a daily, a daily celebration within you. That now because that tomb was empty, now that same spirit who made that happen is now within you. But for a greater view of the spirit and of that promise from Christ, we look into Romans 8. Romans 8, 9, and 11. I'm going to read this briefly. Listen to this. Paul talking to a newer church in, in, in Rome that what we, from what we understand from Romans 1.11 was trying to establish them. That's what, that's what Paul was trying to do in writing to them. And he was trying to help them with this understanding of the Spirit. Listen to what he writes. He says, but you are not in the flesh, but 
You are in the Spirit now. Believers. He says you're, you don't have to live in the material anymore. You don't have to live in the old life anymore. I've seen this in this church just growing for uh, almost two years now. Growing that, that we, we struggle with the old life to the new life. The old life to the new life. And when Paul was writing to the Romans, he was saying, I'm trying to establish you in this idea that you don't have to live in the old life anymore because you are not in the old life. You are not in the flesh because now you are in the spirit. If in, and if indeed, he says, and if you are, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not have the spirit of Christ. He is not his. You see the line being drawn in the sand? He's drawing it right there. Because what is he doing? He's establishing them. And he says, and if Christ is in you, if Christ is in you, if his spirit is in you, then the body, the flesh, is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life because of righteousness. And if you don't hear anything else today, listen to this, Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you, who makes his home in you. And each one of us, as we wake up in the morning, that's what we want. We want life. We want to wake up and have life. We want to take on the day with life. And we don't want to do it by ourselves. Each one of us will, will instant. What do we do? Some of us instantly will post on Facebook in the morning. Why do we instantly post on Facebook? Why do we say what we're doing in the day? Because we want people to know. We want people to like it. We want people to comment on it because we don't want to do it by ourselves. Right? Well, what, I mean, whatever the problem is, if we're going through something, we'll quickly call somebody because we don't want to do it by ourselves. And what we read from Romans 8 here is Paul's talking to the Romans and he's establishing them. He's saying, I want you to have an understanding that the same spirit who raised this Christ from the dead that we've been singing about today is the same spirit that dwells in you. This is the lion living within us. When we sing that God is not dead, he's surely alive, it's this spirit that we're singing about. It's this spirit. If we sing it with passion and we're loving this song and you're requesting it to Jameson and your kids are singing it in the house, you know what they're singing? They're singing that this spirit is living within them. And it's the spirit of life. The old is dead and the spirit of life is within you. What could you do? As you and I are here today, it's more than just an annual celebration that we're coming into. I mean, a minute ago I was in the, with our band and, and, you know, we're jazzed up. All of us are in our bright colors, you know. I mean, it's just pastel day. I don't know. I mean, it's just awesome, you know. We're all in our bright colors and, and we're wide-eyed because we're ready, because we know that you're ready, because it's Easter. And I come in and I was telling this and I want to share this with you. And you may think that I'm Debbie Downer. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Why is this day different than next Sunday? And why is it different than last Sunday? And I was telling them in there, I was like, we come this, this Sunday with the same passion as we come last Sunday and we'll come with next Sunday because we're celebrating life every Sunday. And I want to say that to us today. I want to say that to you. But as you're here today, you're going to hear it next Sunday and you're going to hear it the Sunday after that, that God's grace and mercy for us has given us life within us to live. But what do we read? And I'm going to rehash this just one more time. That for those of us who disregard this promise, then Christ's spirit is not living within you. And when Paul was establishing the new believers, he was trying to help the new believers, trying to help me, I mean the old believers, whatever, whoever's reading this, when he was trying to help them and establish them, he was saying if you disregard that part of the Trinity, if you say God is great, Jesus is great, but I don't know about any of that, then you are disregarding Christ within you. That's what he said. So this morning, I want us to celebrate the spirit of life that we have inside us. If you're here today and you want this lion 
roaring inside you. Man, it's calling on the name of Christ. And it's taking that on and it's saying, that's what I need in my family. That's what I need in my relationships, for them to be mended. That's what I need when I'm raising my teenager and I just don't know what else to do. I need my lion to roar. But Christ has to be within you.